today is going to be hyperbola week. We're going to deal with hyperbolas today, tomorrow, Thursday, and then we're going to quiz on hyperbolas on Friday. Okay? So I found it was actually in the same website where I did the, um, found the ellipse one. Okay? And this is what mathwords.com says about a hyperbola. A hyperbola is a conic section, and I apologize, I forgot the, we have a board for hyperbolas too. I'll, I'll have it in class tomorrow too for the kids to get, but I totally forgot that I was going to bring that along today. Um, but it can be thought of as an inside out ellipse. Okay? And it actually is, the last class referred to it as two parabolas. But it's really not. It, it looks it looks parabolic on both sides, but it's not a parabola because remember a parabola is always like increasing at a bigger rate. So that U that we're talking then almost becomes vertical, whereas a hyperbola just goes out towards some asymptote. Okay. Yeah, I said the A word. Okay. We have two of them today. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So. Technically, a hyperbola is defined as the, the locus of all points such that the difference between the distances to each focus is constant. Okay? Before, in an ellipse, it was the sum of the distances to each focus was a constant. Now it's the difference is a constant. Okay. But we'll get back to that uno momento. Okay. There are two distinct equations for a hyperbola. Okay. The top formula is for a, <coughs> excuse me, a left and a right opening parabola or parabola, hyperbola. The bola is going to get me. The bottom one is for an up and down hyperbola. Upon first glance at the formula, the formulae, if you will, for a hyperbola, what do you notice is different? There was one in an ellipse, too. It's what? Hyperbolas are the only conic sections where we subtract the squared terms. Okay? Which will come into play next week when we're identifying conic sections. Okay? But a hyperbola is the only conic that subtracts the x squared terms. You just call me Lynch, you don't have to call me <laughs> And so it really determines which one it is, up, down, left, right. Okay? A left, right hyperbola is x squared minus y squared. And up, down is y squared minus x squared. Later on, we're going to go through some steps as to graph them. That's why I said you needed one graph today, because we're going to graph one particular problem. Okay? Just one. Just one. Okay? And then that's going to be part of one of the steps, is determining which way it'll be. Okay? So, some real-world type applications of this. Okay? Hyperbola, again, is the difference between where the disk the distance to the foci, the difference of that is a constant. Okay. Some funkiness. You'll never have to know this, but the angle, it, this is physics actually, angle of reflection is the angle of, the initial angle is the same as the angle of reflection, or I don't remember what like bouncing off again. Okay? Hmm? 
Got to get the physics teacher in. Love that physics. Okay? Where you can find hyperbolas, okay? The coolest one is if I had a lamp. I forgot to bring the lamp. Okay? If you had a lamp, right, and you put a shade on this lamp, okay, above and below, provided you got enough space, you know, you put the lamp up high enough that you can see the bulb there above and below, makes hyperbola. Okay? Especially if your um, lamp shade like that lampshade kind of bows out a little bit. If your lampshade is a cylinder where it's flat on the, you know, it doesn't, it's the same size uniformly, then it for sure makes a, a parabola or a hyperbola against the wall. Pretty sweet. You know you want to go home and try. Okay. Sonic boom from a, the sonic boom shockwave from a jet is in the form of a hyperbola. Or at least half of the hyperbola, I should say. Um, you get a little bit of one um, in front of the jet, but the jet's traveling faster than a speed of sound, so you don't get that much. You get it after it goes past. If you, there's some cool, if you, if you see, you can Google these images, but you can see a jet um, in humid, they do it a lot in the Mediterranean. Bring the jet, they'll bring like, I've seen F 18s do it. Um, they'll put them down right on top of the deck so they're like 50 feet off the water, and then they'll go zooming past the carrier and they'll bring the speed of sound there in the carrier, and then you see the um, the cloud, which is actually the, the sonic boom there. Pretty sweet. Same thing here, let's pull it and let's find it. Because it is, the cloud actually is also a hyperbola, okay? Both sides are, it's, it's pretty sweet. Okay. And then you actually get when with the F eighteen you get a sound you get a sonic boom off of the cockpit and you get one off of the, the tail. Okay. That's pretty sweet. Okay. Other ones, there's a uh, planetarium in St. Louis in the shape of hyperbola. Radio signals, they use hyperbolas a lot. An hourglass. An hourglass actually is just an hyperbola. Yeah. Okay. So let's work through. There are seven steps to graphing a hyperbola. Okay. Seven of them. A lot more involved than ellipse, than an ellipse. Okay. There's and actually there's more work with the steps too. Okay. So. This is the hyperbola. We're going to graph this hyperbola here in the next, oh, half hour or so. <laughs> the first thing that we should do, even before we go, get to step number one, is we should determine which way this one's going to open. Okay? So, remembering that if it's x squared minus y squared, that hyperbola is going to open left and right. And if it's y squared minus x squared, it's going to open up or down. So based off of that information, which way is this hyperbola going to open? Left and right. Okay. That's going to come into play here momentarily. Oops, I almost put up and down. Okay, so this is a left and a right one. Then, step one, so really the whole part of step one is figure out which way it opens and find the center. Okay? Find the center just like we have been finding the center all along. Okay? So what is the center of this hyperbola? Or where, I should say, not what. Where is the center? 3 comma negative 2. We think opposite, just like we have been for the last three weeks. Okay. So the center of this hyperbola is at the point 3 comma negative 2. Nope, as a C again. Okay. Yep. 
So then when we go to the graph, we would put that center as a C right on our graph. Okay? Now, what we're going to do here is we are going to, and pa pardon me while I go back a, a couple of slides here, we are going to build a box. Oops, hold on, I can actually put where this box is going to be. This box will be right there. Right there. Okay. We are going to build a box in the middle of our hyperbola. And we're going to use that box to graph the hyperbola. Okay. And so in order to start building the box, okay, we are going to start with what's under the x squared term. Okay. In this particular case, 9 is under the x squared term. We're going to take the square root of that. The square root of 9 is 3. So the left and the right sides of my box are 3 away from the center. So I'm just going to put a little dash right there because I don't know yet how high or how far up and how far down my box needs to go. On both sides, left and right, because we're building a box. We're not building a, or we're building a closed box, I should say. We're not building an open box. Okay. Step three, and slow me down if I'm going too fast. Step three, let me first bring back in step one and step two. Step three says we can finish off the box by looking under the y squared term to figure out how far up and how far down we go. So 16 is under the y squared term. So the square root of 16 is 4. So I'm going to go up 4 and down 4 from my center. And then I'm going to dash it in dash in my box, because now I can finish it off. Now, you may be saying to yourself, self, shh, I don't need to draw this box, and I'm going to say, I don't know how else to draw a purple one. Okay. You've got to do the box in order to do the hyperbola because of step number four. Okay. Step number four is going to tell you that we need to make the diagonals of that box because that forms the hyperbola's asymptotes. The diagonals that we made up, or the diagonals of that box that we just made, give us the diagonals of the hyperbola. Okay? So, I'm going to go back here, and I, ideally, we'd use something straight. Okay? ID, ruler, straight edge, book, planner, okay? whatever. Ideally, we're going to use something straight. And we're going to draw in the diagonals of our box.
final, whatever we've got coming up, formative, okay, all those things coming up, I'm going to ask you for the equation of the asymptotes. Okay? So, what mathematical thing are they? Are these asymptotes? Are they circles? Are they parabolas? What mathematical type thing are these two asymptotes that I just have in purple? They're what? They're lines. Yeah. So what do I need to make the equation of a line? I need the slope for one. Okay. So let's call let's call this one asymptote number one and this one asymptote number two. Okay. What is the slope of my first asymptote? The slope is not 1. Four thirds? Do you agree with four thirds, Carson? Okay. Four thirds? Positive four thirds? Positive four thirds. Okay. I would agree with positive four thirds. What is the slope of asymptote number 2? Negative four-thirds, do we have anybody that agrees with negative four-thirds? Okay. Negative four-thirds. Now, let's think about that for a moment before we go on. Oops, I put positive four-thirds again. Negative four-thirds there. Okay. Let's think about that for a second. Okay. In general, without even creating my box, is there any way that I can come up with the slope of my two asymptotes? Which one over which one? The square, so the slope here of my, actually I'll put it in black so it sticks out a little bit. The slope here of the two asymptotes is going to be plus or minus b over a. Always. Okay? It will always be that. Okay? But that's just slope. Because if you think about it, we built the box. Okay? We went up b. We went over a. Rise over run tells me that I'm going to go up B over A. This one then would be negative A. It's going in a negative direction. So up B over negative A, rise over run. Okay. But it's even more than that. I need the slope and I need the y I need the y-intercept too. Now, in this particular case, it's easy to find the y-intercept because the corners of my box were right on the y-axis. If the corners of my box are not on the y-axis, can I go directly to y equals mx plus b? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. In the not cases, then I'm going to have to use the point slope form. Okay? Y sub 1 minus M times, or equal, Y sub, Y minus Y sub 1 equals M times the quantity X minus X sub 1. Okay? And the point, what's the point that, or what point do both of them go through? The center. They both go through the center. So you already have the point. You can find the slope. Okay? And then, boom. There they are. Okay. In this particular case, my first asymptote is going to be y equals 4 thirds x minus 6. 
My second asymptote is going to be y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 2. Sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's not nice. This time, this time it was nice. Okay. Any questions on finding the asymptote? Step five then says you are going to locate the vertices of your hyperbola. They will be the midpoints of the sides of the box that you just made, depending upon which way your hyperbola is going. Way back in step number one, we said that this hyperbola was opening to the left and to the right. Correct? Okay. So that means then that my two vertices are going to be located. One of them is going to be right there. One of them is going to be Right there. So in this particular case, I have vertices at 0, comma, negative 2. And 6, comma, negative 2. Well, depending, I mean, if you realize then that this was a left and a right, okay, then you would take, so the square root of the number underneath the x term, add, add and subtract that to the x part of your center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, because everything, because that center is going to, it's the midpoint, you know, that is kind of the midpoint of all of the, the sides. Okay. Now that we've found that, now we can draw it in. Okay. So I'm going to go to a new page, and I am going to, because it's kind of all, uh, oops, wrong one. Tap the brakes. This way we can see what's going on here, okay? So, because this is going to recap now everything that we did, okay? So, first we said it was a left and a right opening hyperbola because it's x squared minus y squared. Then we found the, we found the center first. And we said that the center was at the point 3, comma, negative 2. Okay. Then we built our box, right? We said left and right. 3, up and down, 4, drew it in, then we found our asymptotes,
Then we found our vertices. Oops, I forgot to put that R. First asymptote was y equals 4 thirds x minus 6. y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 2. Then we found our vertices. 0 comma negative 2 and 6 comma negative 2 and then we can now draw it in. Okay? So when we draw it in we're going to approach the asymptote. We're not going to grow away from it, we're going to approach it. A parabola would grow away from that asymptote. A hyperbola approaches it. Now, On a test or a quiz, there's a lot of stuff to do in this one. Okay? So there's going to be, a, if you notice, with parabolas, there was like four things that I had to fill in underneath the graphs. And under circles, there was two. Under ellipses, there was four. And there was four. Two foci, two vertices, five. There's a second too. Yeah. No. There's going to be at least five, maybe even maybe even more, depending upon if I say what's A, what's B, okay? which way it opens. Okay. Let's do. Okay. So we, there could be up to seven underneath the hyperbola. Okay. Put those steps. Oops, wrong one. Oh. So then the last step that we have now is now. We've got to find the foci. Okay. I know it never ends, but there's seven of them. But I broke it down, that's it. No, there's seven, seven steps, not seven foci. Seven steps. <laughs> Hell, Ellie almost had a coronary back there. Okay. All right. The downfall, parabolas, the foci was one way. Ellipses. The foci was one way, different way. Hyperbolas, it's a third way, okay? which is luckily you guys got a note card. Okay, so the foci are located, still finding c here, but we use the Pythagorean theorem: a squared plus b squared equals c. Okay? So it's an easier formula to remember because we know it as the Pythagorean theorem. So in this particular case, a squared is 9. Did you notice? Just 9. Yep. A is 3, so a squared then would be 3 squared, which is 9. B squared, B squared is 16. So that means c squared is 25. So c is 5. Okay? Now, I put the plus or minus there because remember you got to go both directions. But really the distance is 5. Okay? And in this case, since our hyperbola was opening left and right, we're going to add and subtract that to the x part of our center because x is our left and right. Now, if you forget that, you could always remember, <clears throat> I'm going to go back one here. You can always remember that the foci are located outside of the box, but inside of the hyperbola. So I got to go 5 to get into the inside of the hyperbola, which tells me then that my foci 
are at the points negative 2, comma, negative 2, and 6, 8, comma, negative 2. More stuff for the bottom of the, below the graph. Well, we just did two. That's it. Because we got a graph now. So, if you were writing down on a note card, step number one would be opening. And center. Step number two would be left and right side of the box. Step three would be top and bottom or up and down side of the box. Step number four would be asymptotes. Step number five Vertices. Step six finally is draw, and step seven is full side. I'll let you fill in what you need to get off of that in order to be successful Friday and going forward. I saved the worst one for last. This was this is the worst one. Of the of the four conic sections. No. I, this one has the most work involved with it, so I saved it for last. Oh, you still got the worst one that you have for us to do? Well now we got now we're gonna put it forward and we're gonna wrap them and then we're gonna come up with the equations and show you the differences. And then next week we're going to I'm just going to throw out an equation for you, and I'm going to say graph it. And you're going to say, well, based off of this, it's a hyperbola, or based off of this, it's an ellipse, or this, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then the last week, then we're going to intersect two things, a conic and a, like a line, a conic and another conic, all good stuff. Hyperbolas and anything past, yes. Friday. This Friday, yes. Okay. No. So it will like be. like last week it was, you know, one side was on on okay. that week and then the other side was okay. on the previous stuff. Yep. Be just like that.